So I think there's actually a difference between what we think of as bodyweight training and what we think of when we say calisthenics. This isn't an official definition, but I think most of us would probably follow this naming convention. So for bodyweight exercises, you think of things like push-ups, pull-ups, etc. And for calisthenics, you tend to think of the more advanced fancy stuff. You know, your planche push-ups, your single-armed pull-ups, and your handstand push-ups. Both types of training definitely have their place. I'm a big fan of high repetition bodyweight training, but I think that the calisthenic stuff perhaps has the greater wow factor. So I suppose the question that I want to address today is how do we go from doing the high rep bodyweight training and transition to the more advanced calisthenic skills? Because I think a lot of people, when they start out with calisthenics, they're going to find it a little bit obtuse and daunting. Like, how do you do a planche push-up if you can't already do a planche push-up? There are plenty of progressions out there, lots of great videos on the internet showing you how to get to that point. But the actual process doesn't feel that much like training because it's so skill-based and because you're training these awkward and unusual parts of your body. So we end up just not doing it. It feels uncomfortable and we're not sure if we're making any progress. So I'm going to highlight some exercises that I like to use that develop the traits and the properties you need to be able to perform the advanced calisthenic skills, but it still feels like you're getting a great workout. This is the stuff that's difficult enough to offer a real stimulus and give you something to shoot for, but it's not so difficult that you can't even do it, so what's the point? These are my recommendations for advanced calisthenic skills that are suitable for starting out. So I'm going to start off here with the pike liftoff. So I think I got this one from Fitness FAQs, which is a fantastic channel. And before we go any further, I just want to say I'm not like a fantastic calisthenics athlete. I'm someone who dabbles in it like I dabble in everything. I understand the biomechanics and the benefits and how to do it, but I'm not the best at it myself, as you'll see. So don't watch me and then try and copy my technique. Watch those other guys like Fitness FAQs, like Sonderberg, like um, the Bodyweight Warrior, and they'll steer you in the right direction. That said, I think because I'm kind of at a more beginner level with a lot of this stuff, I may be in a good position to share with you guys what works for me. So the Pike liftoff is basically a pike push-up where you're going to angle your shoulders and head towards the ground. You're going to do a push-up but at a much more vertical orientation. This requires you to bend at the hips and you can come up on your toes because we're not focusing here on mobility of the legs uh, but it still can be a little bit of an awkward position because you're trying to get as much weight on the shoulders as possible. You'll see that in one take here I have way too horizontal a posture. I fixed it up a little bit, but yeah. Try not to worry about that too much though, because what we're really interested in here is the lift off at the bottom of the movement. So you're gonna lower yourself into that position, trying to keep your forearms nice and straight and create a triangle between your hands and your head. And then when you're in that bottom position, you're gonna hold it there and then you're going to raise the legs. So you're going, lifting them off the floor, lifting your feet off the floor and raising them as high as you can whilst holding that balanced position. You're not touching the floor with your face. What this is doing is obviously it's a fantastic shoulder workout. It's also a great glute workout because you're using your glutes. You've got to engage your glutes to straighten out those legs. And this is going to teach you to be able to do that better when you're up in the air, give you more control. At the same time, you'll learn to control that position at the bottom of the handstand push-up, which will increase your um, balance window so that you're less likely to fall over if you start to topple forwards because you're practiced at holding that and catching that position. This is addressing an issue I have myself. This is a great exercise in general though, whether you're interested in learning handstand push-ups or you just wanna learn greater body control and build your glutes at the same time as a tight, strong core and your shoulders. Something you can do anywhere and doesn't require any equipment and it's a really great stimulus for building big shoulders as I talked about in my recent shoulder workout video. I'm using parallettes because I've had a little bit of a issue with my hand and wrist, but you don't need to use parallettes. It gives you a greater range of motion, takes some of the pressure off the wrist, 
but they're optional. I'm just doing like three to four repetitions for three sets here, and that's plenty to get a really good workout in. Now, some of you might be saying for beginners, this pike lift off is a impossible feat, Adam, but you can just adapt it to be more of a movement for beginners. All you're gonna do is raise your feet, but only as much as you can. So if your toes are just slightly lifting the ground, that's fine, um, put them back down. And over time, you'll be able to get into that fully straightened out position. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about today's sponsor, Incogni. So Incogni is a tool you can use to take back control of your personal data online. Unfortunately, there are hundreds of companies that we interact with every single day online that store our personal information. If there should be a data breach, then that information can end up in the wrong hands. And in fact, many of the companies we hand our information over to will also sell that data to other third parties so they can use it for marketing. Sometimes they do this even though they shouldn't. Sometimes it's because you ticked a box that said, I do, do not, do not, do, 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 do not wish to have my data sold onto third parties. And this can lead to a host of issues, whether it's just unwanted targeted marketing, whether it's the risk of people using your identity or committing other kinds of fraud against you. And I hate these spam calls. Every time I get one, I get a panic reflex. Well, that's where Incogni comes in. Incogni will sweep the web looking for your personal information and then issue removal requests. What's more is they use repeat removal requests to make sure that your information stays gone from those sites. I've been using it just for a little while and I've already had my data removed from 44 different databases and all these companies are people I've literally never heard of. Just give you some peace of mind knowing that you've got a service like Incogni working on your behalf. And it's also just the principle of the thing because you want to say to these companies, oi, no. If you want to give it a go for yourself, then use the link down below and code Bioneer, and you can actually get 60% off your membership. So check it out. Thanks again to Ignog Inogni. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys. On with the show. Next up, we've got pseudo planche push-ups. And again, do not copy my technique. It's all over the place, but I have kind of hacked it a little bit to be more useful for what I'm interested in. So I kind of want to be able to do a straddle planche. It's kind of a middle position on my life goals. It's not something I'm actively shooting for right now, but I would be interested in doing it. What I really like this kind of training for though, is training not only scapular protraction, pushing the shoulder blades forwards, but at the same time training that straight arm strength because when you're in the planche position your elbows are locked out your arms are straight and you're leaning your weight forwards it's great for the um, anterior delts at the same time it's great for building really strong and resilient elbows and it'll even give you some bicep hypertrophy which comes as a surprise to many people so for those who aren't familiar the planche is one of the most advanced calisthenics movements i mean it's not you can progress this even further but it's definitely you know a top one percent top 0.1% skill, it's really cool. And what it looks like is you're basically straightening your arms out completely and then holding your body off the ground, legs straight, you wanna have the scapula protracted. And if you can keep your legs straight and horizontal with the ground, close together, brilliant. A lot of people will do a straddle plant where you're widening the legs to shorten that lever arm, making it slightly easier. And to do this, you need to lean that body weight forwards. The pseudo planche push-up is a great way to build that strength so that you can eventually accomplish this to target things like straight arm strength and scapular control. And it's also just a great workout. It's a great workout for building bigger biceps, for building the shoulders, like I said, the triceps, the core is brilliant. Uh, the problem is it feels really awkward and weird. What you basically wanna do is get yourself into a push-up position, but with your arms lower down the side of your body, you're gonna lower yourself down. And when you push yourself up, you're going to straighten the arms entirely and push through the shoulders whilst leaning your body forwards as much as possible. And you can progress this movement by leaning more and more forwards as you do it, thereby putting more pressure on the biceps tendons, on the shoulders. Over time, eventually, you'll be able to lift your feet off the ground, or at least this is the idea. You're basically doing a bent arm planche at the bottom of the position and then a planche with your feet touching the ground at the top of the movement. I can do a planche push-up if you kind of squint, but it is so cheating because I'm using a lot of momentum to get myself there. I kind of throw myself up in the air, my arms straighten for a second. Nobody would really count this. Other than training the elbows, I wasn't really getting much from my studio planche push-ups, but what I've changed, and as you'll see, like I say, my techniques all over the place, but that's kind of intentional because what I'm trying to do is to get as close to finding that balance point in both the bottom position and the top position as I can without falling over. So I'm leaning my body forwards and kind of almost trying to balance myself up there. That means I'm moving around each time, but this I think is beneficial because it's teaching me to get into the position and strengthening the actual position I need to balance, whether that's more forwards or less forwards. So I'm not progressing in that typical way. I'm just doing reps and I'm focusing on that and trying to build that mind muscle connection and strengthen myself in those crucial positions. 
at the same time, something else I've been focusing on lately is trying to keep my bum nice and straight because my lower back has been rounding slightly, you know, concave in the way we don't want it to round at the top and bottom of the movement. We want to kind of try and keep that nice, straight, rigid body. So I'm actually pushing up and I'm focusing on leading with my butt. And I think eventually I want to try and get the butt over the arms so I can open up those legs. It's a work in progress, but whether or not you achieve this straddle planche, whether or not you're interested in that, this is a fantastic exercise for building properties that so often go overlooked. In terms of where you put your hands, I mean, some people face them all the way back, some people face them all the way forwards. It's a kind of trade-off here between what's gonna help you with your balance and what's gonna help you with your wrist mobility, you know, not to put too much stress on the wrists. I'm using the elevated finger position at the moment with my hands turned slightly out, but just find what works for you. And to start with, if all you're doing is doing a regular push-up, but pushing all the way through and straightening your arms, that's a great starting point. And again, you don't need a lot of repetitions. You know, five, six, four, two to three sets is ample. So one more upper body movement is the one-armed push-up. We have less to say about this because more of you will be familiar with it. I love the one-armed push-up. It's a cool trick. I can do it for about 10 repetitions on a good day, which, you know, is a personal achievement. It's advanced without being too advanced. Widen your stance with your legs as much as you need to to be able to do the movement. Place your hand to the center of your body if you can. Focus on twisting and drilling into the ground. Try and depress the shoulders so they're not elevating too much. And as you move upwards, again, we're gonna protract through the shoulder and don't half rep it, don't cheat. Bring yourself down nice and low so that your chest and face are nearly touching the floor. This is a brilliant way to work your chest and your triceps. It also just teaches you to brace the entire core, the entire body as you go through the movement. Any energy leaks here, you're gonna collapse. And something I really like about it is that it's anti-rotation because you've only got support on one side. Your body wants to twist to the ground and fall. Um, but if you brace yourself, you'll be learning to resist forces in the rotational plane which is something that we do all the time in the real world. So this is a great, great exercise. And of course, if you want to regress the one-arm push-up to a slightly easier variation, you can just elevate your arms off the ground so there's less weight on them, or you can lightly place your free hand on something to give you that extra support. You can just go to failure on the one-arm push-ups. Like I say, I can do nine or 10, but I'll often just do eight or seven, especially if I'm doing them following these other exercises. Now I'm moving on to a pulling motion and here it's the arched back pull up and I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because I've talked about it a lot before but basically what you're doing is you're doing a pull up but you're turning it into a more horizontal movement by leaning your body back and pulling the sternum up to the bar instead of pulling your chin over the bar and what this does is it engages you know the rhomboids and the scapular retractors far more in the movement the posterior delts and it's great for fixing bad posture because if you're hunched forwards all the time, this is essentially pulling against that in completely the opposite way. It's actually also a lot more difficult and if you want to start with something that's harder but gonna give you a lot of benefit, then this is a great one for you. The easier regression is just the um, inverted push-up, the body weight row, but if you can build up to this, then this is gonna be a much better exercise for you. I wanted to do more stuff here actually. I wanted to show you guys um, archer pull-ups where you're pulling up more on one side than the other, but I couldn't do it because there wasn't a bar available to do it on. So I'm gonna make a follow-up to this video if this one's popular. I definitely have more of these kind of calisthenics exercises if you're interested and want to see them. For the arch pull-ups, I'd recommend something like three sets to failure. For me, that's something like seven or eight. Like I say, this is a surprisingly difficult movement. Now moving on to legs, I'm going to start with sissy squats. Sissy squats are one of my favorite exercises for building stronger legs with body weight because they offer more than enough stimulus to get some real growth, but you don't need any weight on you. All you're going to do is you're going to lean forwards with your knees and lean backwards with your upper body and come up on your toes. So you're basically kind of doing a neo dodge. You want to focus more on pushing the knees forwards towards the ground than you do on uh, tilting yourself down or leaning back and this will help you to balance and this is going to not only really isolate the quads building nice big quads making your legs look a little bit more impressive but it's also going to strengthen your knees in a big way just like the ATG split squat but obviously you want to build up to this don't just launch into it and on top of all that it builds a lot of balance that said as you start out with this you're going to want to put a hand on something to support yourself 
basically you've got to decide if you want to focus more on building size and strength or more on building balance and performance. If you want to build size and strength, then you need more stability, so place your hand on something to support yourself. And like I say, build up to this. If you want an easier regression, then just don't go down as far or do the Hindu squat. This is where you just squat down on the balls of your feet. But this one is a great one to build up to. Sissy squats, I do two or three sets of 10 reps. You can go higher, but there's no need to completely destroy your legs here. And like I say, you want to ease into it. Finally, for the legs, we're going to be looking at the pistol squat. The pistol squat, I only did it on one side today because I hurt my left hip apparently. Pistol squats are great one-legged exercises, build a lot of hip stability. At the same time, you're building a lot of strength in the glutes, the quads, the um, hamstrings, all at once, and a lot of balance and stability. It's just a great challenging movement. And like the sissy squat, you can get enough of a stimulus to grow your legs and to build strength without needing to add weight on top, and you can do them anywhere. I can do pistol squats anywhere without support, but if you want, to, again, to focus more on strength and growth, you're going to want to make it a bit easier for yourself. This is a significant mobility challenge, so raising your leg, your standing leg up on something where you can lower the free leg down without having to worry quite so much about mobility is a great way to do this. Alternatively, or as well, you can also, once again, place your hand on something to support yourself. And with the pistol squats, the easier regression, of course, is just to not go down as far, or you can focus more on kind of um, side squats as you build up to this. For the pistol squats, you can do sets of five, 10, whatever you're gonna fail at again. And I'd recommend two to three sets once again. Of course, I don't just train with these movements. I combine these in my workouts with weight training, powerlifting, bodybuilding, kettlebell training, as well as a bunch of other stuff like running and mobility work. So if you want to see how that might look in a training program that's all written out for you, then you can find my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0 in the description down below. And that comes with over 85 plus pages of written ebook, as well as two hours of instructional video. Let me know what your favorite calisthenics movements are like this. And if you know what I mean about looking for movements that offer enough of a challenge and a stimulus for the muscles to cause growth while still also helping you to slowly get towards those calisthenics movements that you're interested in. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.